I think we now have a very good background to what is encryption. We covered symmetric, asymmetric. We touched base slightly on TLS protocol. What is it? How it fits in OSI model? Which brings me to the meat of this whole conversation, which is MTLS, because it's something which has been asked by my subscribers a lot. Why we need it? What does it mean? And how different it is with whatever we have discussed so far, and why we need it today. So a lot of things, but yeah, if you could just answer this. In a very yeah, it's a it, it's a simple question, but it, it can be a long discussion. So first, yes. let's explain what MTLS is, so everybody understands. It. So MTLS stands for Mutual TLS. So the standard encryption TLS protocol is about server authenticating to the client. So I know that this is Amazon. I trust that it is Amazon. It does nothing for the server. Validating and trusting who the client is, and in a lot of cases like e-commerce, why would Amazon want to validate every single person that connects to their website? But in other cases, yes, I want to know and make sure that yes, it is this person or this per this valid thing connecting to me. Right. So that's what MTLS does: is the mutual authentication. So it's not just the client. Trusting that yes, this is the server. It's also the server saying, "I trust that you are this specific client." So that's right. the whole mutual part of this mutual mm. MTLS. I think I think if I have to relate it with our example, we might have to ask the custom authority to show their ID card before asking my password. Because exactly. if I am if I am an Indian, you want that proof. I also want to know on which basis you are asking me that. So I think that's where where the mutual authentication comes in. Exactly. Or another good case, situation, and I'm just throwing things off the top of my head. Is I go into a store. I know that it's the store. Right. I know. Let's just say it's a Seven Eleven, you know, convenience mm. store. Mm. And I know it's Seven Eleven convenience store. But now they, and I trust it because you know everything shows that yes, this is valid. I can go to their website and say yeah, this is one of their branches or whatever the case may be. But now they want to check who I am. They want to validate. Let's say I want to buy some buy some alcohol. <laughs> am I who right. I am? How old am I am? Can I prove it? <laughs> so I have to show them my ID. Right. That's that mutual authentication. Hmm. I think yeah, makes sense. So so why why we need it? Uh, why we why we need mutual auth at this point of time? Is it due to a lot of cloud adoption and moving to? Uh, because I was working on a use case where we are using MTLS between port communication in the Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> those kind of scenarios i have seen uh what why why we need to make sure that we are why a server need to make sure that it is connecting to a legitimate client why yes. is that important so it's all is important for certain use cases and scenarios okay. so going back to my example of amazon e-commerce me surfing the internet and going to these websites no we don't need mtls because they don't care who i am all right. They don't need to validate who I am. When Amazon doesn't need to validate me going to the website, if they want to validate me, I have an account and I log in, which is a completely separate process. Right. But with the change in how we build applications, and with the change of how we access applications, MTLS is becoming important. And I'll give you the two two use cases that I can think of easily off the top of my head, and I'm sure there are a lot more. Number one is how we build applications. Applications have gone from these monolithic applications. I have the front end web server, the middleware, and the database is my standard three tier application in a monolithic thing. Yeah. And nowadays we have containers and microservices. Now this three tier application becomes a hundred different components. Right. And they all have to talk to each other. But we know who is talking to who, and we have all these pieces. So they are known entities talking to each other, and we don't want that entity to just say, "Yes, I know I'm talking to this back the, to the database piece." But the database also wants to make sure I'm talking to the valid middleware piece that, or for these microservices. So they need. So we want to make sure that everything is talking to each other only. So only valid components. So now a hacker cannot pretend they're the middleware and try to access the database because they can't get that reverse authentication on the client side. The database say, okay, you need to validate that you're in this list of approved things that I have. 
and you're not there. Mm. So when we go and break up these applications, start doing a lot more network communications between these different components in the microservices, that mutual authentication becomes a lot more valid. I think now because a lot of communication is API based. So yes. that's, that's where also I think you need MTLS a lot more than exactly. a traditional communication, which we do. Like if you're logging to our bank website, I think there we don't need MTLS. But if Correct. you are talking, for example, if uh, one microservice, uh, which is uh, order microservice, wants to talk to a banking microservice to authenticate or connect, then there I think you would need both the microservices to identify each other equally because both the services want to know if there is a bad actor playing some games in the middle. Exactly. I used to work at a bank and one of the largest and biggest challenges from a security perspective was what was our quote unquote partner network. Mm -hmm. These were devices that sat in our DMZ that our partners put in our network or we had in our network that we put there that the partners would make the communications to. So whether, you know, dealing with banking transactions or trading floor information or whatever the case may be, we had these third party vendors that had access to parts of the network and we had to kind of keep it open, but we also want to restrict who could access it. And back in the old days, we did things like using access lists and firewalls and things like that. And now mutual authentication makes it even more, it adds another layer of security because now I can prove that yes, it is this thing. And yes, he is authenticated to be able to communicate to me. So Frank, does it, does it have a downside because it might make your communication heavy and it might have some performance issues because the time taken to authenticate both parties would be anyways higher than only one party authenticating or showing the proof uh, through a certificate or a key. So what do yeah, you have to say on that? Absolutely. It does make it more complex because now the server has to authenticate every single client connection. Hmm. So it is, if it's a high volume or high number of users or devices connecting to this application, then it does take a lot more resources to do that authentication. So that could be a concern. So you have to scale your hardware and infrastructure appropriately, but in general, once you get past that mutual authentication, the whole encryption and everything else is going to be the same as it was before. So there's no overhead on that piece. It's just the actual okay. authentication component that is going to increase. So I that. think only for the initial uh, uh, communication, the certificates will be exchanged. But after that, it would, it would be a normal standard That's communication. Correct. Okay. That is okay. correct. And I do want to bring up this other second use case, which is becoming a lot more important. And I'm going to bring up is a buzzword people describe it in the different ways, but I'm going to bring up the term zero trust. Mm, yes. Yes. You're right. right? It, it, it is. So a buzzword. now yeah. we have these applications that are like you kind of said earlier, mentioned earlier that are in the cloud, they're distributed, they're sitting in different locations. They're not just in my data center anymore. They might be a public service and now I have users that are not sitting in their office on the corporate network, but they're, they're sitting in my home. I'm connecting to it through my phone. I'm connecting through all the you know other ways. And we have to authenticate the user. And we have to authentic we authenticate the user using zero trust technology and the concept of it. But we want to add another layer, mutual authentication, prove that the client is actually the client that we want speaking to that server. So zero trust is another very good use case where you want to say MTLS makes sense. Mm. 